Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most fascinating concepts in all of statistics. In fact, the study of statistics can't be complete without the understanding of this concept. It is known as the central limit theorem. So let me take a little detour and try to establish the relevance for central limit theorem. You might have seen that a lot of these space research organizations like NASA and so many other organizations across the globe, when they're trying to study an unknown planet, they're looking for the availability of oxygen and water there. Why are they doing that? Because oxygen and water are things that we understand very well. We know how important these are for the signs of life, for our survival. Similarly, when you're trying to study an unknown population for some characteristic of interest, let's say life expectancy or the income, if the population is not known to you, how would you go about studying? There are many challenges in studying a population. So population is not static. If you study something yesterday and you came back and report it today, it might have changed a little bit. So it may not always be practical for you to study the population. Secondly, it may also not be practical because of the constraints on time and resources. How much money would you be willing to spend to study the population? How much time do you have to study the entire population? How would you train people to study the population? So a lot of times we have to resort to studying a sample. Now, if we do not know the entire population, is there a way that by studying a sample, we can make profound conclusions about the population? Well, that very connect comes from the central limit theorem. When I quoted the analogy of the other planet and the availability of oxygen and water, you can imagine that oxygen and water for us is the normal distribution because we know the normal distribution really well. So if we are able to establish a connect between an unknown population and a sample which is available with us through a normal distribution, that'll be great. And that's what central limit theorem makes us capable of doing. So don't just look at these concepts in isolation as pure mathematical jargons. Try to understand why something is relevant. In fact, we have done a video on this topic, which I will put as a link at the top in this video's description. You may watch that experiment as to how this actually holds good. It's such a powerful concept. But let's just understand what is a central limit theorem. So let's say you have a large data of 100,000 observations from which you collect samples of size 50 each and you collect 100 such samples. So what am I saying? I'm saying the parent population has 100,000 observations. You are only collecting one sample at a time. Each sample has 50 observations. It could be the age of 50 individuals. It could be the income of 50 individuals. For these 50 individuals in each sample, you can calculate an average. So sample one would have a certain average. Sample two would have a certain average. If you collect, let's say, 100 such samples, the distribution of these means of each of the samples would be a normal distribution. I repeat, so the central limit theorem says, irrespective of what distribution the parent population follows, if you collect samples from this population, the distribution of the means of these samples that you've collected would follow a normal distribution. But we know a normal distribution is characterized by its mean and standard deviation. Can we say something about that too? Well, yes, of course. Central limit theorem says that the mean of this distribution of the averages that you've taken for each of these 100 samples would be coinciding with the parent population's mean. So while you could not study those 100,000 observations and do the calculation, by studying these 100 samples alone is giving you an idea about the mean of the population. Moreover, it's also telling you about the standard deviation. And the standard deviation of this distribution of the sample means would be given by sigma by root n, where sigma is the standard deviation of the population and n is the sample size, which we said is 50 in our case. So anything which is unfamiliar or unknown has been brought to the terms that you understand very well. You have a normal distribution now to study these characteristics and you already know its average is the same as the population's average and its standard deviation is the standard deviation, which is sigma by root n. Couple of things to be known for central limit theorem to hold good. We assume that these observations that we've collected are independent and identically distributed. So there is no influence of one observation on the other and they follow a similar distribution. They come from the same parent population. That's one thing. Second is, it is preferred that the sample size that you've chosen is greater than 30. So I once again insist that you go ahead and watch the experiment that we've shown in the other video, which clearly proves that this actually holds good. And you can do that experiment on your own too. If you like the way we present things to you, 
Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, turn on the notifications, and please make sure you share it with others. Knowledge multiplies when you share it. Thank you.